Okay, we have a group G, and H is a finite non-empty subset, which is closed under the group operation. And we have to prove that H is a subgroup of G. So proof. Now, I won't bother writing down the hypothesis. It's just so much to write. So suppose it's a group, and suppose H is a finite non-empty subset, which is closed under the group operation. So we have to prove that H is a subgroup of G. So the first thing we have to show is that H is non-empty. But that's one of our assumptions, right? It's a non-empty subset, so that part is done. So done. Two. H is closed under the group operation. But again, that's one of our hypotheses, right? So it's closed under the group operation, so that part is done. The last thing we have to show is that H is closed under inverses. So suppose we have an element X in H, and we want to show that the inverse of X also lies in H. So the only thing we haven't used is the fact that H is finite. So we somehow have to use the fact that H is finite to show that X inverse also lives inside H. So note, x squared, x cubed, x to the fourth, etc. are all in H, right? Because H is closed under the group operation. But H is finite. But H is finite. That means at least two of these must be the same. So there exists distinct positive integers m, n that are positive integers, m not equal to n, such that x to the m is equal to x to the n. Now, if m is not equal to n, then either m is bigger than n or m is less than n. So let's assume, without loss of generality, without loss of generality, that m is bigger than n. So we somehow need to incorporate the inverse into all of this. So let's do it in steps. First, let's take this and rewrite it. So note, we can rewrite that as x to the m minus n equals e. Now to involve the inverse, maybe just multiply both sides by the inverse. So x to the m minus n minus 1 is equal to x inverse. OK, now the last step is to justify why this is an h. We have to explain why this is an h. So this is where we have to be really careful. So since m is bigger than n, that tells us m minus n is bigger than 0. So um, we can do it from here, but it might be easier if we think of it this way. So since it's bigger than 0, that means m minus n, well, the smallest number it can be is 1. So it's greater than or equal to 1. OK, it's greater than or equal to 1. So let's take cases. So if m minus n is equal to 1, right? If it's greater than or equal to 1, it's either equal to 1 or greater than 1. So if it's equal to 1, then x inverse is equal to x. Well, then this is 1, right? So we just get 1 minus 1. So we get x to the 0, which is equal to the identity. Now, if x inverse is the identity, uh, then x is the identity, because the inverse of the identity is the identity. So this is an h, right? Because then this is x, right? If x inverse is e, then x is e. So it's an h. If m minus n is bigger than 1, then x inverse, well, that's x to the, let me write it like this, m minus n minus 1. So that means that this term here is positive, right? It's positive. That's what it means if it's bigger than 1, because m minus n is bigger than 1. You're subtracting 1, so it's positive. So if it's 1, then it's x. And x is already an h, so we're done. If it's bigger than 1, then it's among these. And we said those are an h, so there's no problem there. So this is an h. So in any case, the inverse is an h. So this shows that 
So H is closed under inverses. So that's the last thing we had to show. And so therefore, H is a subgroup of G. Kind of a delicate argument here at the end. So I hope that helps.